Hello everybody! In Swift 5.5 we finally got async await. It has so many features like async get, async let, with task group, uh, checked continuations, actors, non-isolated, and much more. And we'll cover everything in this video. Let's start actually with why we would need something like async await, right? I got this example project ready for you guys. Um, you can get it uh, with the link down below. Please check it out. So I'll go to uh, this view model. No, actually to this repository here. And we will see um, this terrible function right here, which looks pretty much like a normal uh, function if we are dealing with asynchronous code, right? We have a couple of problems here, like we have to um, always call completion if we forget about it. It's our fault, compiler doesn't tell us anything. It looks terrible in general, you know, it's hard to read and uh, not very understandable unless you know what's going on inside, right? So let's see uh, what uh, we can get with async await here. I'll just um, copy and paste the function that we uh, would like to see here. Okay, this is how the same function would look with uh, async await. You can just uh, already see uh, how it is much better. First of all, we have to specify this async keyword here, right? Then we also return thumbnail. So if you compare it um, with uh, the original function, we had a completion with a result um, of type thumbnail and error. Now instead, we just return thumbnail and throw an error if something goes wrong. How does it work? So the first line st uh, remains the same. We just call this uh, synchronous function here. And here we actually see something new. With async await, uh, Apple actually introduced us uh, with a bunch of functions, basically async alternatives uh, for the functions that we already know. Like for example, here we got a URL session shared da data task with requests. Now we just have session da data for requests, right? We have data, response, and we also try it because it can also throw the same as our function as well here. Let's actually use it in action. But before that, let's actually just compare the two, right? Here we had like, I don't know, maybe 20, 24 lines of code, right? Here it's uh, much less than that and much harder to read here as well. And uh, once again, you have to call completion handles all the time here. If you, uh, if I comment this out, try to compile, we get a compiler error. So pretty neat. Let's actually use this function. This is a synchronous function as we discussed before. So it will behave a little bit different. As we've seen here, it's also an asynchronous function. Believe it or not, right? It's also marked with a sync. We have to await it. And just a little note, await always goes after try in this case, right? Try await. Simple. So let's go to view model. And here, as you can see, I'm still using the old version. Let's actually take and use um, something for the new version, right? It's very similar to what we had before, right? But instead of closure, we actually have it, um, yeah, just on the line and we get a result variable. Since we don't want to let the view uh, handle the error, we, do, uh, we have a do catch block here which just prints an error for now. Now, do we have to update something else? Let's try to compile. Actually, we do. So here on appear, we actually, we have this uh, error, a sync call and function that does not support concurrency. Basically, as we um, as we have noticed it before, we can only uh, call async, fun async functions inside other async functions. So for example, if I remove async here, we'll get the same problem here, you see? It's called async context. So. Let's um, let's actually. So first we have to await it, right? But it's it won't be enough. Um, how to fix it is to actually use task. It's kind of a bridge between async and non-async world. Actually, what it does is just it di dispatches whatever you put into it onto a queue and lets it execute it. Uh, there is another handy thing like here. Instead of on appear, you can just use dot task. But since uh, our view model function is called on appear, let's keep it like that. So let's actually run and see if uh, it still works. So we see some thumbnail uh, popping up, so we know that it works. Let's go next. So what I want to show you is that not only function can be a sync. Let's go to the repository here and let's uh, create an extension like that. Here we have a variable with a getter, but this getter is a sync and we can, uh, we actually call an synchronous function inside it. Let's see how we would use it. So here instead of by preparing thumbnail, 
we would just type thumbnail and that would be it. We can even make those one-liners. The code here is double the amount of what we have in the new function. Pretty neat, right? Let's continue. So um, the next uh, the next thing that we want to do is parallel execution. Um, right now, just uh, so you know what we are doing, right? Um, we have uh, we have we are showing one thumbnail. Let's say we want to show two thumbnails, and for this we would um, we would call this function twice, right? So let's try uh, how it works. But before we have to reset it uh, in the view model. Let's see how it works. Okay, that's awesome. I would uh, put a print statements here and there. So let's see how it works with the print st statements, just to see how it works, right? So first we see that we start uh, fetching 100, we end it, and only then we start 101. So we actually wait for the uh, first image to complete, uh, the download to complete before we start with the second one. It can be, become a problem if, um, so it's already a problem because we don't want to wait, it makes no sense, right? We just want to fire the second task off as soon as possible. How we would do that? Actually, it's very simple. We just uh, have to use async, uh, async let here. So uh, what we would do is actually um, do something like this. And we would remove a wait here. So let's try to compile. Yes, that's exactly what we need to do. But here then we would have to wait for them uh, and actually try as well because those can uh, can fail. So, okay, so this com compiles. Mm, okay, so uh, we start with 100, we start with 101. So they are executing in parallel now. This is how you do it in parallel. But let's say you want to do it for an array. Um, you wouldn't do it like, I don't know, you wouldn't copy and paste it, um, especially if you have a dynamic size error, right? You, you have no idea how many elements before that are doing before that. So how would you do this? Here's how I would do it, right? I would uh, get an array, right? Something like result, I type thumbnail, I will get, I would uh, have a for loop for IDs, uh, for ID and IDs. Here I would just call the function, right? So let thumbnail, let's say equals fetch thumbnail for ID. Let's see if it works. It um, overall compiles. Okay, it does. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, so it took a while, and here as we can see, uh, here we can see why we don't execute in parallel. We do it one after the other. So we are basically to um, to start downloading uh, thousand and nine. We have to wait until everything else to complete before that. That's not what we want to do, right? Obviously not. How we change that? So we are using task groups actually. So um, here's what uh, how it would look like. First, we start off with typing with throwing a task group. It can actually be just with task group, but since we throw in the inside, we want to uh, call it with throwing, right? With throwing task group here. We get a closure, um, and inside the closure, we uh, we get an access to a task group. How we would do this, so first of all, we have to specify result type, then we uh, iterate in a for loop to add all the tasks we want to execute in the same group, right? It's very similar to dispatch group a little bit, like not not, not the same, but very similar, right? So here, uh, what we do is actually, um, we just call this function inside this add task uh, closure. So, and then what we want to do is we want to wait for each task here in the group. So um, um, here we actually literally iterate over the results that are async, right? So we try for each image in the group and uh, we append them um, to our results array. So here we add all the tasks, they uh, they just start executing and here we are waiting for the results. Then we return the result array and this thing is also returned, right? So you don't have to type return, but it is returned here. So let's see how it works now. As you can see, they execute immediately, like they fire off all of them at the same time and finish also at the same time. That's great. So let's uh, let's continue. 